Hello friends, Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink with another couple Halloween cards. I'm not ready to be done making Halloween things yet. <laughs> Plus, still going through a little bit of a rut in life and all the things. So after my last video and I mentioned like just kind of mucking around and playing, I wanted to do more. And in that previous video, I was talking about like using sprays, which is what I'm doing again here today because they are a lot less predictable for me and it's fun to get messy. And I talked about different surfaces. So in the last video, I was working on just my glass mat and this time I'm just working on a nonstick craft sheet. It does make a difference depending on the surface, whether you're doing like ink smushing or the sprays like this, anything like this. The surface you work on can sometimes change the results because, you know, inks or sprays or whatever will either bead up on it or they'll move differently. You know what I mean? So I started with my craft sheet and I have just Canson XL watercolor paper and I started with black soot distress oxide spray. Love black soot oxide. It, whether it's in the spray form or just black soot oxide ink, it just... It just has a really neat look to it. Very, very um, like black chalkboard like. So I was using that and I also added hickory smoke, which, you know, lightened it up and gave it that fun smoky look. And then, you know, and I was doing ink smushing and all that stuff with them. And then over that, over those backgrounds, I sprayed um, Iron Gate uh, mica stain. This is part of one of the Halloween packs. And this just gives it the sparkle. I love the mica stains. They are fun. <laughs> so I used one pack for today's cards. These are the one of the Halloween packs. And I mentioned this in other videos. And um, for those that might have missed it, this year's colors, because um, six Halloween colors have been released, six Christmas colors, will be re-released re in a couple years. Last year's colors that a lot of people missed out on are supposed to be re-released next year the plan is for them to just keep alternating as long as there's you know demand and all that stuff so anyway i used iron gate first did that spray this background these backgrounds are dry so they're just inky kind of dark moody but there is going to be a sparkle and i'll show the sparkle at the end and then i pulled out my or pulled out it was still sitting out from the last project my crackle paste i put that onto my mat and i am mixing black soot distress paint to tint this black. Now, Tim Holtz has mentioned in videos about when you're tinting paste, um, sometimes if you're using like inks to tint them, like distress inks, oxide inks, etc., um, the color can leach from the paste, you know, and start like kind of seeping onto your project or like your cardstock and whatnot. I've never had that issue because I have done many videos, you know, using my paste and tinting them with inks. So again, it's one of those things where you should just experiment depending on what you're doing. But if you're using the paints to tint your paste, that generally will almost never happen. The only thing with using paint to tint your paste is it does make them very opaque, which I'm fine with. I'm going with black. I don't, obviously not going to be transparent, but I just want to mention all the things. So I tinted this crackle paste with the black soot distress paint and I just went like a couple drops at a time and just kept mixing it until um, I got it, you know, really nice deep black. And then I'm applying the paste over this CZ Design Just Batty stencil and not being perfect with it. Perfection's overrated. Plus I'm trying to, you know, be more messy, have more fun with it. Just, you know, just, just do it. <laughs> So I also placed the stencil on an angle, you know, I'm trying here. <laughs> so with this paste, because it's crackle paste, you'll, I'll set it aside, let it dry. As soon as I'm done, because not only the paste, but black soot distress paint, which is super duper pigmented and also dries permanent. So as soon as I'm done this, I take my stencil immediately to the sink. I washed off, wipe off my craft mat, all the things. So I let this dry. It's all crackled. I'll show the close up um, at the end as well. Just so you guys can see the crackles. I don't think it really shows up right now. But it's dry, it's crackled, and now I want to bring in some orange into this. So I have the Harvest Moon and Burning Ember mica stains. The Burning Ember is like a deep, deep, super deep orange, like very reddish orange. And then, of course, Harvest Moon is yellow. So I'm just going to mix them together to get just a more um, 
orangey sort of shade. There's also the jack-o'-lantern mica stain. That was one of last year's colors. I could have used that, but I thought I would just show mixing these. So I mixed those two together onto my mat, added just a little bit of water, and then added like just a big messy splattering on here. Looks like a hot mess. Just go with it. <laughs> So it does kind of seep into the cracks here and there, but that's not what I was going for because it doesn't matter so much. I just wanted that gorgeous orange and it'll be like shimmery and sparkly. So right now it's just sitting on top of everything. So it does just look like a hot mess, but I'm going to wipe off the excess and I'm actually going to just dab at this. And the minute I do that, it, it like transformed. I loved it. Just the color and the background and the, the orangey splatter and the black crackle bats. These were fun. Really fun backgrounds. So cleaned up my mess and I've got it like all over my hands. It's going to get worse. <laughs> but yeah, got my backgrounds, cleaned up my mess. The next thing I'm going to do, I have this rayon seam binding ribbon. You can get this off of Etsy. I mean, you can get it in a big roll like this. I just like google it you can take a screenshot of where when i showed the this roll this roll is massive like 100 yards it's gonna last me forever i also have little bundles that i got off etsy a couple of years ago i forget when i ordered these like forever ago and then i've been hoarding it ever since tim did a video um his ranger christmas video if i remember i'll link to the timestamp on it because it's like a three hour long video i highly recommend watching his videos i always say this tons of inspo and he does show specifically um, tinting this seam binding ribbon with mica stains. And I was like, oh, I've, I've, um, dyed ribbon. Like I did this years and years and years ago. I think I even did a tutorial for split coast for it. I can't even remember now. Um, but it was grow grain ribbon and I was using, uh, dye reinkers to tint it. This was like 15 years ago, lifetime ago. Anyway, um, I had, and that's why I had got this seam binding ribbon was to use like with sprays and inks and things. And then I never did. And it never occurred to me though to use the mica stains with it. So that's what I did. So I sprayed this ribbon with that burning ember and harvest moon sprays and a little bit of water because why not? I wanted it to be even extra crinkly. So I mushed it up. You could wear gloves when you're doing this. I didn't care. This washes off quite easily. The amount of like, you know, hand washing I do and stuff. I, I genuinely don't care. But once it's sprayed with your mica stains or you could use distress sprays, whatever, um, you can set it aside, let it dry. I was impatient. I wanted to see the finished result. I didn't want it to be perfect either. That's also why I like the crinkly because you get, you know, lighter areas and darker areas. So I did use my heat tool to speed up the drying process. And then I wanted to show this because it's very hard to really show, but, and that's what got me in Tim's video is because I used the mica stains, the sparkle shows up on the ribbon, which chef's kiss. <laughs> so this is what I wanted to show you guys. I was so excited. I was like, look at this sparkle. <laughs> so fun. I, I legit, I, I don't know why, but it never would have occurred to me to use the mica stains on the seam binding ribbon. So that's just extra fun and really easy and just a fun little messy project. So why not? So I set that aside. And then my next step with these cards is I die cut some vellum with one of the CZ Design nested tags, wafer dies, because I'm just obsessed with tags again. And I ran two of them through my little Xyron sticker maker. This is the little three inch one. And this puts adhesive just evenly all across the back of both of these tags. Before I remove the release paper or anything, I like to trace around my die cut piece, um, either using a stylus or here I'm using a bone folder. And then I press it in really well as well, just to make sure the adhesive is fully adhered to the back of my little elements. And then by tracing them as well, that prevents any of those little sticky side bits that sometimes like to stick out when you're using a Xyron. So I've done that, removed the release paper, and then I die cut additional tags from the same vellum. And I'm just going to adhere two layers together, just like so. So it just gives it a little more strength, makes it a little bit more opaque, but it's still vellum. So it's all fabulous. I did not run this through again. I don't want Xyron on the back of this. I'm not going to use that adhesive to adhere these to those backgrounds because the backgrounds have like the shimmer, like the sparkle bits from the mica as well as a crackle paste. I don't like 
um, a Xyron type adhesive, I either want liquid or I'm going to use foam squares because adhering over something, especially like crackle paste, you want a really, really strong, some like generally dimensional adhesive is the best way to go. So I die cut the reinforcers from the set from some black cardstock and adhered those to my tags as well. And then I pulled out some burnt orange cardstock and I'm going to stamp the spooky sentiment from the CZ Design Halloween People stamp set. And I used my anti static powder tool and I stamped the sentiment with crackling campfire distress oxide ink. Nice deep orange. And then I heat emboss that with um, crackling campfire distress embossing glaze. You could use clear. It'll same result or very similar result for something like this. But I have the embossing glaze. Why not use it? And it just kind of intensifies it a bit. So I've heat embossed the sentiments. I wipe away the excess anti-static powder. I'm going to die cut these sentiments with the coordinating wafer die. Once these are die cut, I took the Harvest Moon and um, Burning Ember mica stains again. This time I'm just working on the packaging from the stencil, I think. Because uh, I couldn't find my craft mat by this point. This was like... Me coming back and forth between a couple days to make these cards. <laughs> like I said, things have been a little rough. But anyway, I just, you just need a non, you know, something nonstick, basically. So mix those two colors together. And then I painted the mica stains over these sentiments. I've done a video already, like watercoloring with the mica stains, because you totally can. They It works fabulous. So, so many ways to use them. So this way I get the super shimmer there's the mix of like when you look really closely in real life you can kind of see the two different colors of the sparkle from the two different colors I mixed you know and it just it's just gorgeous again I love these mica stains they're fun to play with so I have my sentiments I've loosely arranged my elements on my card front here and I'm using a couple little companion sentiments from that same Halloween people stamp set and I lined them up on my tag and then picked them up with an acrylic block, used my anti-static powder tool on these tags, and I'm going to stamp and heat emboss these sentiments in white. And those die cut bats at the beginning when I was mucking around with the sprays, I did an extra piece of cardstock with just black soot distress oxide spray. And when that was dry, I die cut it with the CZ Design Batty Wafer Dye. And then the outline I die cut from black cardstock. And I'll come back to that in a minute. So I've stamped those little sentiments and I stamped them with white pigment ink and then heat embossed them with white embossing powder. And now these bats, I am adhering together. So I've got the like splotchy background bat and then the black outline. And then once I adhere those, I decided I wanted to emphasize their eyes just a little bit more. So I'm going to take my white gel pen and just draw on their draw on their little eyes there just to give it again that little that little extra something so i adhered those together with some craft tacky glue and then took my jelly roll um, this is the jelly roll 10 pen this is the same one i show like generally when i'm doing like copic coloring but yeah when i'm using a white gel pen 99.9 percent .9 of the time it's this white jelly roll pen absolute favorite so Drew on their little eyes just to brighten them up a little bit with the gel pen. And now I've got my um, seam binding ribbon that I've tinted. So I cut that in half and then doubled it up because I had more than I needed really for these projects. But I was like, go big or go home. Why not? So threaded those through the tag. And then to kind of like attach it all together, I just took a little bit of twine and wrap that around. I'm just going to tie it in a knot. I wanted this ribbon to just be kind of, yeah, crinkly, floaty, loose. Because again, in real life, like you can see the sparkle and all the different like ways the colors went. I just love, love. This was fun. So those, some of you guys that are, you know, old school viewers of mine that watch back in the day, like ribbon used to just massively be a thing. Like all my cards used to have ribbon. I used to have a ridiculously huge ribbon collection I don't anymore I just kind of fell out of love with it in a sense like just it's just not my thing anymore I kept a little bit of it you know I use it every once in a while something like this this was fun um but yeah instead of a lifetime of ribbon I now have a lifetime of embellishments 
<laughs> in the lifetime of all kinds of other things. Anyway, after I attached the ribbon, I attached my sentiments with some just thin foam squares and then attached my little bats as well with thin foam squares gives them a little bit of dimension and then I put foam squares on the back of the tags behind those elements so that it doesn't show through the tags and then press those into place onto these backgrounds my card bases are going to be top folding a2 uh, white note cards so four and a quarter by five and a half and on the insides of these cards I'm going to stamp another sentiment from the Halloween people set and I ink that up with that crackling campfire distress oxide ink so stamp that onto the inside of both of these cards. And then I took the bat image from that same stamp set that matches with all of this. And I'm going to stamp that with VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink just to tie everything together. So I've got that nice deep orange and then my little bat. And then I adhere the card fronts to the card bases. And my final bit of embellishment is I do have embellishments that match these are the studio Cadia ripe persimmon pearls that i've used a lot i actually i think i need to order another pack of these i when i pulled them out i was like oh i've, I've used a lot of these this is it's a beautiful color it uh, i don't know there's something about this like deep orange color so put some of those onto both of these cards once i was happy with the placement i'm going to adhere them into place with little dabs of craft hacky glue and then once those are here are adhered, these cards are complete. And like I promised, I am going to turn my flashlight on so you guys can see all of the glorious shimmery goodness from these mica stains, as well as like the crackle paste. And just there's a lot going on for these and it was fun. <laughs> so yeah, the backgrounds have all of that like texture and swatchy goodness, but also the sparkle like that iron gate mica stain spray is Oh, it's so pretty. And then the splotch, splotchy splatteriness I added with mixing the Harvest Moon and the Burning Ember. Love. And then like the sentiment is like super extra sparkly and even the ribbon is sparkly. And yeah, my sparkle loving little self was having a heyday and just loved it. So as always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. In the blog post, there will be um, picture links to all the supplies used. So all that info you can find directly below the video in the description box. And I'll also of course have the supply list below as well. So you can check that out if you were interested. Thank you all so much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping and commenting. Subscribe if you haven't, I would really appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.